Hi, and welcome to this video. The purpose, the main purpose of this video is to review the Zoom simulation year three. But before I get to that, I want to remind you that the market is down a thousand points today, and it was up a thousand points yesterday and down 2,000 points two days ago. So today is a, now is a very interesting time to look at the stock market and learn from this volatility. So it's, it's very interesting. So I do suggest if you have the time, go to Yahoo Finance uh, or go to a couple of different websites and read some of the news and some of the interesting articles about the market. Okay. Also, what we have here, I want to just remind you that I'll be posting announcements. I already posted an announcement about the midterm as well as a video. So uh, Echo Center will no longer be used because uh, we're not going to be recording videos in the classroom anymore. So now you're going to go to class videos. There's a link menu button right here. And this will open up our class videos uh, where I just posted the video midterm review and instructions. So it's a 12-minute video to explain the midterm, how it works, what you're going to do, what you need to study, what chapters are covered, how many questions, how many points. It's all there. Uh, and of course, if you like, subscribe so that way you always, you hopefully will get notifications when I post new videos for the class. I have all the chapter videos from chapter one through five posted here for you to review for the exam and I will be posting new videos here for the remaining chapters of the course. Heading back to um, Blackboard here, so we're going to be looking at the Zoom simulation now. Keep in mind though that you do have homework to do, so if you go to my finance lab, just keep um, uh, five homework, four homeworks have been uh, already done. Homework five is going to be due soon. And then you're also going to have homeworks 6 through 10. Uh, so make sure you put down these due dates so you don't miss any homework because I'm very strict about not accepting any late assignments. So just a reminder, please keep track of your assignments and get them done. Do them early just in case you know something comes up the night it's due. Okay, moving back to the simulation. Here is a, um, we'll start with the charts on year three. So we see that non net profits per team have gone up. So the highest team here had 73 million, and then we moved up to 105 million, and now the highest team here, we have a new high score of Tech Part 2, 138, almost 139 million of net profits. Good job, guys. But if you see here, uh, most teams have, we have an upward trend in net profit, is what I would expect in an industry where people are making investments to improve their production, sales are expanding, so this is what we expect to see in a growing industry. If we look at points per team, we see that, yes, we've covered the fact that year one points are the easiest points to make for um, the whole game because you're coming off a bad management team and you're replacing them with better decisions. So year one, we scored high. Every year after that, we're trying to score somewhere between uh, around 400 points. And we see that here's the 400 point mark. Most teams have done that in year two and also in year three. So the top winner in points in year three is V, um, followed by closely by um, two halal cart guys, uh, very good dealership, and Cool Joe, as well as uh, some of these teams also here that have done very well in points in round two. We only had one team lose points in round two, so that is um, a problem. They need to review that. And if we look at stock price, we have, looks like we have the same two companies, well, actually we have uh, guacamole and the new number one in Tech Parts 2 for overall stock price per team. So Tech Parts 2 is at, um, I think that's 72, I think it cut off part of that, $72 per share. And the team sort of towards the bottom are under $50 a share. So there's a big you see how we started out all together at the same point and it was starting to fan out more as your decisions carry, you know, have a weight in expanding the companies doing better from the companies doing not as good uh, as we continue to move forward through the rounds. And the same thing with sales. So we have uh, a new number one in sales, which would be Team ABV. Uh, and we still have uh, Cool Joe was actually... I think it was yeah, but we have now Cool Joe here and Team BVD, Cool Joe and Ford Fiesta. Uh, I don't know if it's not Ford Fiesta, Ford Sonata. So these teams are all top in sales. And high sale prices are great. And we have one team down here that, um, well, I don't listen is still the same 
sales because they don't listen. But there's a team here. This I can't really isolate it because it's it's in here. But they made a, a good comeback in sales here. This team here. I'm not sure what number that is, but a few teams. Uh, only one team went down in sales, which is a real question mark since all the markets are expanding at double digit percentages. Now, earnings per share, a new number one tech parts two in earnings per share, as our number one eclipsing guacamole from last round. But guacamole is still doing good. But we have FB last minute cars, um, and it's kind of jumbled up here, surpassing them. So they're still in the game. This team had a nice comeback. Please pass us. Actually, did increase their earnings per share, so they're doing better. And this is the total market. Okay, so let's go back to the leaderboard. So we see here the top scores this week were around were, were, were this over 600. Most teams were over the 400 points for the round, which is great. That's what we're heading for. Um, I'm going to skip right down the cumulative points because this is what total points. So remember, we're trying to some teams are crossing the 2000 point mark after only three rounds. So you see some teams are doing very well, top 99 percentile scores. And most teams are, if it's the third round, so if you're above, uh, you know, 1200 points, you're still on track to get full points for this simulation. So we have uh, all teams except one, two, three, four, five, six teams that are not quite at where they should be at this midpoint, but they could still certainly it's not impossible for them to still get the maximum points if they turn things around. I suggest emailing my TAs for some advice on your team uh, if you need some help here with this. But the teams that are doing very well, I'm very happy. I think this is some of the best performing teams I've ever had in the class. So keep up the good work. Let's go back up to uh, Gross profit. So the top companies are at 60% in gross profit. So that's sort of the high end. Now, most companies should be, and they are in this 50% range. So that's excellent. And companies that are below 45% are really not getting it. But I'm glad to see no team is below 40% where we started. So you want to increase your gross profit mar margins every round. How do you do that? You increase prices, uh, sales price of the car, you decrease costs, and you can decrease costs in two ways, by operational investments or re reduce the number of specifics, characteristics of each vehicle. Okay, we look at stock price has gone up uh, pretty decently, and return on equity is doing well, total points we covered, uh, operational profit margins, not overspending in marketing helps here, and earnings per share, of course, and return on assets. This is where all those factories and operational investments start to pay off. And we know this from chapter three, from your um, financial analysis chapter and the financial ratios chapter. So let's look at, let's go into, uh, I think, team two. Okay, so the individual, individual charts are really good to look at um, for your company to see where your company has been doing on points and things like that, especially this market potential versus sales chart to see here. You met this coming metal their market potential, uh, which is great, but they might have had some unsold inventory. So let's look at that situation in a second. So let's just look at where you should be in year four. So you should go over to your overview points when you're reviewing your simulation, and we see here, um, this team was able to increase gross profit margins from 47 to 53. Now, there's no actual students in this team. This is a, uh, a blank team that no one's actually in. So I'm using this as an example. And so we see that they earned 11% increase. So the revenues went up by 60%, 66%. They got 66 points. Their current and their quick and debt ratios decreased, or I'm sorry, yeah, no, the quick ratio is increased and the debt ratio decreased, which earned points. So the gross profit margins went up on the gross operational and net earning points there. Total asset turnover was down because the company invested a lot in new assets. The, but because they increased their profits, they were able to increase the return on investment, return on equity, 
earnings per share, but the return to assets actually went down because they, this company bought a lot of assets this round to turn, try to turn things around. And their market capitalization went up, their book value went up, but their sales forecasting was terrible, very inaccurate. They lost a lot of points for sales forecasting and they had a deficit. So the main problem with this company is that their forecasting was not very accurate. So what I always say when you want to forecast, the bit, where you want to start in your forecast is you want to open up the student manual. So if I'm looking at round four in the student manual, this is going to give me an idea. Here we go, year four. This is sort of a average sales for each team. So each company could, you should look at this as a guideline. It's not, a, it's not identical, of course, to what you're going to sell, but this is a good guideline for year four. So when I redo um, the simulation here, and remember, you are responsible for filling out these reflective observations each round. Uh, just keep that in mind. So you have multiple team members. So assign one team member at least to kind of look at those uh, reflective observations, because I will look at those at the end of the simulation to make sure you're completing them. And then, of course, if any area you're not doing well, this self-assessment will give you stars and you can click on this review to get an idea of what to, how to fix things and what to do in certain areas. So it's a good self, uh, self-help area to see how you did in the simulation, how your score was by stars, by description, and by percentile rank. Okay, review your charts. So uh, like I said, these team performance charts are important. Review your industry. What did the other players in the industry do? How did they stack up? How did they build the cars? How much did they spend in advertising? This helps you to get a better idea and you have all the previous rounds backed up here. Uh, you now know about financial statements because you can review your financial statements. And then after you've done all that research and review, you're ready to start the next round. So for team two, I could see here are my, I greatly improved my operational cost reductions because I put a lot of money in these assets. It's one of the reasons my total asset and return on assets were lower because I put a lot of investments in uh, getting these cost reductions. So I'm gonna build my car now and I'm gonna try, try to make my car higher uh, variables than last round. So to improve my profit margin. And then I'm going to also forecast based on, I um, didn't sell many last year, so I'm gonna redo my forecast. Uh, so in this observational uh, box, I would explain that I'm going to help my company's performance by increasing my profit margins, increasing my characteristics. Uh, so these, what's influencing my forecasting is the student user guide as well as last year's sales. So this is how what you kind of put in this reflective observation box. When I move to Sedan, I'm going to do the same thing with Sedan. I'm going to move up. Trying to make a better sedan, which will help my sales. And that was probably why my sales were so bad uh, last time, is because of. But since I have these operational cost reductions, I can afford to make a better car and get a higher profit margin. Okay. Um, actually, my profit margin isn't really that much higher. So I'm just going to tweak it a little bit. Okay, so now it's a little bit higher. Um, let's see how that does for me. So maybe I need some more operational investments in that area to keep that up. Okay, so I'm gonna redesign this car and I got my, my profit margins up and very forecast. And finally, luxury. I'm gonna greatly improve my luxury car. See how my profit margins go up. Okay, it actually went down. So I'm gonna need more operational investments here. Um, so I'm gonna redesign the car a little bit to get my profit margin up as much as possible. Okay. So let me, 
that's my sales. This is not, I'm not saying you should do these numbers. I'm saying this is just, just walking through this round. Um, and then I'm gonna do my advertising. Uh, and this takes a while to do the advertising, but I see that the advertising range has increased. So I'm gonna redo my advertising and I'll be back on the production page after I do the advertising. Now the age target, income target, this has no effect on your sales. It's the money you spend that has effect. So you spend more money, you'll get more sales. But if you spend too much money, you might be creating more demand than you have um, can fulfill. So you're wasting investments. So you wanna kind of look at the student user guide again to get an idea of how to best distribute the money. Okay, so now we're in team two and we're in the uh, production area. So I see here that I don't need any new production plants and I can rework the current inventory. So I'm always gonna to try to match this down here because I don't want to have any excess or shortage. And then I'm going to increase my operational investments uh, for next round. Again here, so here I'm gonna to have to buy. So you know what? Maybe what I'm gonna do here strategically is I'm gonna lower my, f I'm gonna go back to sales page and I'm gonna say for a sedan, 5,500. So I'm gonna lower the sedan and I'm gonna submit that. And then I have to go back to, it looks like when you switch pages, you lose. Okay, going back to sedan now, okay. So now, so here I only have to buy um, one additional plant and I'm gonna, I'll have enough. With that one additional plant, I'll have enough because um, the using the used inventory, but see, you know what? I'm just gonna, so I'm gonna be short a few cars here, which I'm fine with that. Because I didn't, I wanna save the money from buying two production plants because they have the highest capacity utilization. So I'm gonna do that here. And I'm going to increase my operational investments to make the car even uh, even bigger operational cost reductions next round. So here I don't have to buy a production plant, and increase my operational investments. And I'm doing this not so you copy exactly what I'm doing, but I'm just showing you how a team who was kind of underperformed last round can strive to do better next round. Okay, so, and so here, if I was gonna explain uh, my capacity utilization, I'd make the calculation here, units over total uh, unit capacity. And I'd say that my, one of my goals here is to have a high capacity utilization so I have a better return on assets. Uh, and my strategy for operational investments is to buy more or double my operational investments so I get 100 points for doubling my investments, but also so I have a, a higher cost reduction next round so I can increase my profit margins. Okay, finally going to the finance page. I'm going to go right to the bottom and see I have a $29 million surplus where I'm going to just put a little bit to buy back some long-term debt some short-term debt, and some buy back some stock. Not that much stock. All right, just to invest. So I have, I feel comfortable with a $25 million cash surplus. So hopefully my forecasting is better this round and that I sell more cars and that I do well. So next round, after round four is completed, then I'll review round four and I'll review my inputs on this company uh, in this round four and see how they did. Remember, no students occupy this company, so I'm using it as an example of how you can get your, your team back on track for this round. So the next simulation round isn't due, um, let's see when the next one is due. Okay, so round four isn't due until March 29th because we have spring break, you have a midterm, so it's not due into uh, March 29th. So we have some time before the next uh, Zoom round is due. But if you have some free time on the uh, your spring break or, you know, 
next week start working on it and it'll be really exciting now things get exciting we're going to round four five and six this is really real competition is going to kick off so i'm very excited to see and, and i'm very happy with 90 percent of the students playing the simulation have done very well thank you for all the time you put into the simulation and i hope you could see i try very hard to connect it back to the course material so you get an idea of what financially managing a company is all about so you can connect a little bit closer to the course material uh, thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it useful.